Hey folks, welcome back to Green Iron TV. Still the middle of winter here in Michigan. We are covered in snow out there. Uh, it's really cold here in the garage. Uh, but we are going to show you a few little things today. Uh, don't have much work going on on the vehicles. Uh, like I said, it's cold. And uh, But we are going to show you some of the things that uh, we do like to do when we uh, display the vehicles. And of course, uh, one of the things that helps uh, really set the vehicles apart at any type of the displays is when you start adding some of the uh, real life soldier uh, features to the vehicle it helps uh, fill out the vehicle make it look well lived in and of course one of those things adding weapons so uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna show you a handful of all the different weapons we have uh, and then we use to display with the vehicles now one of the things I do want to say um, all the wet all the Weapons that we do have uh, that we put in the vehicles for display. Uh, one of the things I use is all of them are uh, airsoft replica weapons. Uh, and so they are basically inert and don't fire a real uh, live round. So it makes it really nice for shows and stuff like that. Uh, you don't have to worry about anyone monkeying or playing with their live firearm around your vehicle. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, you know negligent discharge or any type of thing like that. So, uh, and these weapons, as you'll see as we look through them, uh, they are going to look very real, very authentic. And of course, with that, I want to remind everybody, especially if you are displaying these vehicles and these weapons with the public, is you have to be very careful. And we always try and treat these just like they are a real weapon. Uh, so, no brandishing, no flashing them at the crowds. Um, and of course, we do keep them on display. Usually in the trucks, they are... Uh, hooked into the gun rack mounts, uh, either on the dash or behind the seats. Um, and so that is one of the most important things because we all know in this day and age, uh, we don't want to offend some Karen somewhere and have her screaming about us pointing guns at her. Uh, so always be mindful of stuff like that, especially uh, displaying out in the public. And uh, with that said, we're going to get on with it and we're going to take you around and show you some of the... Uh, the weapons we have on display with the vehicles, uh, what they are, price ranges on them, and uh, you know, help give you some ideas what you can do to uh, add to the displays of your vehicles. So stay tuned, that's what's coming up next. And remember, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and always leave us a comment. We always love to hear comments from all of you. So thanks a lot, and sit back and enjoy. Okay, folks, let's talk about one of the most popular weapons for display in these 1960s era vehicles, the venerable M16. So here we have a selection of four different M16s from various manufacturers. Uh, all of them have their plus minuses and cost variables in, uh, in cost. So we can start down here uh, with the very cheaply made all plastic um, gun it's made by a company called well um, it is you know the proper dimensions of an m16 um, it looks good uh, these usually run about 40 bucks 45 dollars from the uh, online uh, airsoft retailers uh, very lightweight uh, some of the negatives you know you have some some screw holes and stuff like that um, very kind of flimsy plastic feeling. Um, but when it's actually, you know, in a gun rack, uh, in the display in the truck, it can look pretty decent. Um, uh, plus the nice thing is being really inexpensive. Um, you don't have to worry about if it, uh, you know, uh, being stolen or walking away from the truck at a show or a display. Next, we have one of the more popular airsoft got m16s uh, and this is uh the tokyo maru m16 a1 and this is still a plastic based gun but this uh this gun is a little more expensive this is uh this is usually right around that 200 dollar mark uh metal barrel uh 
plastic receiver, uh, but it has all metal internals. Fairly heavy gun, uh, fairly realistic in weight and feel. Um, you do have the nice Colt AR-15 government markings. And of course, you know, we've added a real M16 sling. And of course, this is a early style M1 or M16 A1 uh, with the teardrop. So this makes a really nice display piece. Um, looks really good in the vehicles. Uh, most people don't even realize you know, when they see a lot of these that they are, in fact, airsoft replica weapons. Next, we can step up a little bit. So this is a uh, gun made by G&P. Uh, and this is a full metal airsoft replica. Uh, once again, of the M16A1. Full metal barrel, full metal upper lower receiver. The, uh, just like the real, the nylon reinforced hand guard, butt stock, hand grip. And of course, this particular one is an early, uh, what they call a slab side. Uh, it doesn't have the magazine fencing or the uh, forward assist button. So this is, you know, what would be known as a very early uh, M16A1. And then lastly, uh, this is a little bit more expensive of a gun. So this is a... Um, what's known as a um, gas blowback rifle. Uh, uses a gas propane charge uh, to fire the rifle. Doesn't actually fire, it's just using it as compressed gas. Uh, this is a full metal uh, rifle, uh, just like the real one. And everything on this rifle functions like the real one. Um, so besides, uh, you know, everything, you know, for the airsoft. So this actually has a full functioning sliding bolt uh, that slides and locks. And of course, all these airsoft electric ones uh, have both uh, semi-fire and full automatic. And of course, this one uh, is made by a company called, uh, uh, this is a, uh, a WE, a W-E, and uh, it did come with the uh, bare sides, and I did send this out and have it engraved. It gives a nice, uh, nice good look, very almost original roll mark look to it. And so this gun here is about 350 bucks. So you end up with, you know, all kinds of different variations. Um, but they do make it nice uh, to be able to display in the vehicles. Uh, especially at shows and parades and stuff like that. Uh, the nice thing is because these are not real firearms. So some of the shows that have... Um, stipulations against real firearms. Uh, you can display these without having to worry about breaking show rules. Also, the other nice thing is, because they are not real firearms, you don't have to worry about uh, about people getting touchy feeling and playing with them. So uh, you know you can have them on display in the vehicles uh, and and not really worry about uh, anything happening. Uh, it makes uh, Makes for a good bit. It really does help fill out the vehicle and give the vehicles a nice, true military, lived-in feel look uh, when they do actually have, uh, you know, a period correct rifle mounted in them. So, so that's the selection of M16s we have. Uh, we'll move on to a couple other pieces. So here we have the big dog. A, uh, another weapon that's pretty popular to display with these 1960s uh, era vehicles. 
And of course, this is the, the venerable M60 machine gun. Uh, this is a replica of a you know, squad automatic type of weapon. And this is, once again, an airsoft replica. Uh, this is, you know, one-to-one -one true scale. And just like the real one, this is a full metal gun. Uh, and this is made by a company called A&K. Uh, and can be found on most of the uh, popular websites for airsoft. Uh, and these are fairly expensive guns. These are about 450 bucks. Uh, but it's, you know, a far cry of what it would be to uh, to buy a fully functioning or even a semi-automatic uh, M60 style machine gun. Here we have it with a uh, cartridge belt sticking out of it. Uh, they come with a uh, bandolier style um, uh, ammo box. You know, you have flip up sights, metal carry handles, extending bipod legs, uh, functioning charge handle. Uh, and of course, it does have an opening top cover. And of course, because this is an airsoft, uh, you know, the internals are completely different. There's the plug for the battery, and that's the airsoft gearbox in there. Uh, but these do make nice fun. You know, the nice thing is, is being able to put these out on display, not having to worry about them. Um, they are heavy. They look authentic. They look the part. That's the nice thing, uh, you know, for a display. Uh, is when it actually looks the part. So uh, I quite often uh, have this M60 uh, set up with the 715 uh, with a uh, passenger gunner, uh, man in the M60. And we, uh, you know, this is a heavy piece. This is uh, this is about uh, 20 pounds. Uh, pretty close in weight to what the real M60 is, so uh, this is not for the light of heart to have to hump this around all over the place. So uh, it makes a real nice uh, setting in the truck and uh, makes a great display piece. So we'll show you now a couple other pieces. All right, and for my 50s era vehicles, like the M37 and the M38A1 Jeep. We have a couple different earlier model rifles that we like to display with those. Uh, so we have a uh, M1 carbine and an M14. And of course, once again, both of these are airsoft rifles. Um, these are both a little bit uh, more of an inexpensive style rifle. Uh, the M1 carbine is what's known as a single shot spring gun. Uh, it actually has a simulated wood plastic stock. Uh, the M14 is an AEG or automatic electric gun. Uh, but it does, once again, have the simulated wood stock. Uh, you can find this weapon with real wood stocks. Um, the nice thing with the the simulated wood stocks. Uh, I don't have to worry about them getting banged around in the trucks too terribly much. Uh, both of these uh, do display prominently in the vehicles at times. Uh, helps, uh, you know, once again, helps fill out. Uh, and of course, both of these, you know, once again, we have added uh, real slings, you know, these are real surplus slings that are pretty easy to find, uh, pretty inexpensive to add, and it just helps, uh, helps make those guns look a little bit more authentic. And then of course, what would the display be without the iconic 
M19 pistol. And so here we have two styles of the pistols. We have a cheap plastic uh, single shot, and then we have a gas blowback full metal. Uh, so you're looking at about, you know, about 40 bucks for the cheap plastic one and just over a hundred bucks for the full metal one. One of the nice things with this full metal one, it is heavy. Uh, everything functions just like the real deal. Uh, even the beaver tail safety. And this, this gun will actually break down and, uh, and, uh, break down and clean just like the real deal. Okay, folks, thanks for tuning in on this episode of Green Iron TV. That's a quick look at the uh, display weapons we have that we put out with all the vehicles when we do take them to shows and parades. Um, like I stressed earlier, please do remember uh, when you do have these out in the public that uh, you are an ambassador of the military vehicle uh, world. So... Try and treat the weapons with respect. Try and treat them as if they are a real life firearm. Uh, follow all those standard firearm safety procedures. Uh, and the most important thing, let's make sure that nobody's handling or brandishing these weapons around the vehicles at a show or during the parade. Um, just so that we can keep everyone safe and uh, make sure that we don't have any panicking Karens out there. And uh, with that, we're going to get on with it. It is still winter here. It is cold. It is snowy. Um, we are lining up some projects uh, to work on for future episodes. Um, we are going to do some more work on the M38A1 uh, that we talked about a couple episodes ago. Uh, we are going to replace that exhaust manifold. And we might even do a repaint on that vehicle this upcoming spring. Um, but... That's all going to come in the spring uh, when the weather gets a little bit nicer uh, and it's a little more pleasurable to work down here in the garage. Uh, it is cold today. It's, uh, it's in the low 20s. Uh, and if you can't see my breath, it, uh, it is cold. And uh, we will uh, pray for some warmer weather and uh, get back to some more uh, content of actually working on the vehicles. In the meantime, we are going to try and continue on through with some of the content on uh, maybe showing you some of the more display pieces. So, you know, we've done the weapons. Now maybe we'll show you some of the, uh, in the upcoming episode, we'll show you some of the stuff like uniforms, uh, you know, backpacks, uh, other types of display pieces that we, uh, we put out with the vehicles. Hopefully that'll help give you some good ideas uh, as we start getting near spring and the upcoming parade and show seasons uh, help give you some good ideas on what you can do to help make your uh, historic military vehicle display look that much better. So thanks a lot, folks. You have a good night. Remember, like, subscribe, leave a comment, because every little bit helps, and we do appreciate all of it. So thanks a lot, folks. Have a good night.